Yo guys, welcome to our channel today. The channel is Nazvin. Kindly, if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Today, we're going to talk about a sensitive topic again, like in our other today. We're going to talk about erectile dysfunction uh, in relation to low sperm count. In our previous video, we talked about erectile dysfunction in detail. And today there is no harm, I'm going to repeat some issues on uh, this uh, erectile dysfunction. Let me know from our previous video how we did it and how we are doing uh, from this video. Let me know uh, if there is any new knowledge which you are gaining from this, uh, which I expect you to get. So we are going to talk about erectile dysfunction, uh, the relationship between erectile dysfunction and uh, low sperm count. So while we, when we talk about low sperm count, we are talking about oligospermia in science, that's what we call it, and erectile dysfunction or, or ED are two distinct conditions. They can sometimes be related or uh, they can be related or uh, coexist due to shared underlying factors, that's why I'm bringing them together. And uh, this is, a, I'm going to bring out the connection between low sperm count and erectile dysfunction. When we talk about uh, the, the, the shared underlying factors, number one is about hormonal imbalance. Both low sperm count and the ED or erectile dysfunction uh, can influence, can be, be influenced by hormonal imbalances, particularly low testosterone levels. So in these both uh, uh, instances, we have uh, uh, both uh, hormones imbalances coming up because the certain plays are a very important role in sperm production and erectile dysfunction. Number two is about uh, vascular uh, health. And when we talk about uh, vascular health, we're talking about conditions like uh, which affect blood flow, such as cardiovascular disease, hypertension and other sclerosis, can contribute to the ED and also impaired sperm, sperm uh, production. Psychological factors is also another shared underlying factor between the ED, erectile dysfunction, and the low sperm count, where stress, anxiety, and depression can contribute to the ED and reduced sperm count. So psychological distress can affect hormonal levels and disrupt the normal physiological uh, processes and involved in sexual function and fertility. Number, five is, uh, number four is about lifestyle factors. Poor lifestyle habits such as uh, smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, drug use, obesity, and lack of exercise can contribute to low sperm count and electrical uh, dysfunction on that particular level. So on treatments or consideration, more medication, some medication used to treat uh, ED or electrical dysfunction such as what you call phosphodiaetrase or a PDE5. So inhibitors like Sildenafil, that's what we call it generally here in Africa, Viagra. Uh, Tadalafil, uh, what we call Cialia, Cialias, or Vadanafil, uh, Vadana common known as Levitra. So may have a positive impact on electrical function, but do not directly address the low sperm count. On hormonal therapy, as a treatment consideration, we have the steroid replacement therapy may be prescribed to address low testosterone levels which can improve the ED and also sperm uh, production. However, TRT or the steroid replacement therapy may not always be suitable for men to try to conceive as it may suppress also sperm production. Lifestyle modifications, adopting healthy lifestyle including quitting smoking, moderating alcohol intake, maintaining healthy weight and uh, managing stress can be of a great uh, help to benefit both ED and also uh, sperm count. On the psychological impact, we talk about the relationship stress. Both ED and infertility can, can lead to stress and a strain in intimate relationships. But uh, psychological impact of these conditions can, can uh, further exacerbate uh, symptoms and overall well-being of the individual. Number two is about self-esteem. When you talk about the psychological impact of the, of the two, so self-esteem may uh, affect the men experiencing with the ED and or infertility may struggle with the self-esteem issues because they feel inadequate 
uh, with the low self-esteem, muscular issues, which can uh, impact their health and their quality of life at that particular point. So guys, while low sperm counts and erectile dysfunction are distinct conditions or they are uh, distinct, they can share common underlying factors and may, may, co may coexist in an, some individuals. So addressing, addressing these conditions of an equal comprehensive approach and the cons uh, that considers the psychological and also physiological factors. Consulting with the healthcare provider is the best way or a fertility specialist, specialist can be a uh, hope help for accurate diagnosis and also personalized treatment options tailored, tailored to uh, help uh, the individual at the, that particular point. Guys, when we talk about uh, uh, ED or electoral dysfunction, I shared from my previous videos about uh, electoral dysfunction and uh, we shared uh, uh, a lot of the role of testosterone on that level. So I'm going to talk about uh, 12 causes of uh, erectile dysfunction. And when we talk about erectile dysfunction, it's very common and it can result from uh, various conditions such as physiological, physical, and lifestyle factors. So here are the 12 potential causes of erectile dysfunction. Uh, we have, uh, I'm going to classify them in terms of physical causes and also psychological causes. I'm going to start with the psychological causes. And when we talk about psychological causes, we know we talk about, uh, number one is about stress. High levels of stress can interfere with the body's uh, uh, ability to achieve and maintain an erection. Number, ten, number two is about uh, anxiety, uh, also and uh, anxiety performance uh, can, can lead to exacerbate the uh, electrical dysfunction. Number three, number, number three is about depression. When what uh, depression can diminish the sexual desire and lead to electrical dysfunction. Number number four is about relationship issues, uh, problems with the relationships such as poor communication, unsolved conflicts, and lack of intimacy can lead uh, uh, can make one to have the electrical dysfunction. So those are the four. Causes of uh, electrical dysfunction, I've talked about stress, anxiety, I've talked about depression and also relationship issues. Now, uh, number, the, the, number B is about, uh, the, the second part of it is about physical causes. And here I'm going to do around, uh, uh, we talked about 12, I'm going to do 8 of them. Number one is about, uh, the uh, number one physical cause is about cardiovascular diseases. And when we talk about cardiovascular diseases, we're talking about heart conditions. Uh, we talk about hypertension. We're talking about osteoclosis or hardening of the arteries, which can reduce the blood flow to the penis, making it very difficult to maintain or achieve uh, an erection. Number two is about diabetes. Diabetes, high blood uh, levels, can uh, blood glucose levels uh, which go beyond control, they affect, they damage uh, the blood vessels and also nerves that control erection leading to erectile dysfunction. Number three is about obesity. Excess body weight is associated with cardiovascular disease and diabetes, both which can cause erectile uh, dysfunction at that particular point. So also we have uh, hormonal imbalances with low testosterone levels and hormonal Issues such as typhoid, uh, that, such as the thyroid uh, gland problems that contribute to uh, ED, especially the hypothyroidism and also hypothyroidism, they, because of those imbalances, they can contribute to erectile dysfunction. Neurological disorders, such as conditions such as uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, what you call so Parkinson's uh, disease and also spinal cord injuries can interfere with the nerve signals which affect the erection at the end of the day. Also number six is about what you call Peyronie's disease. This condition is involved, it involves the scarring of the tissues inside the penis, causing the, uh, causing the, the, the penis to curve, and also uh, which, can, which interferes with the, uh, uh, with the penis function and it can sometimes be very painful. So as a side effect, ED comes up about. Medications, uh, some medication including the antihypertensives, 
uh, antidepressants and certain prostate treatment can uh, can cause the erectile dysfunction uh, at that particular point. So also substances abuse. So when we talk about substance abuse, we are talking about alcohol consumption, smoking, and also illicit drug use, which impair the blood flow and nerve function, leading to uh, erectile dysfunction. So on physical causes, we talk about cardiovascular uh, disease, we're talking about diabetes, we're talking about obesity, we're talking about hormonal imbalance, we're talking about neurological disorders, we're talking about medication and also about uh, substance abuse. So erectile dysfunction can uh, be caused by a wide range of physical and the physiological factors including cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, obesity, hormonal imbalances, neurological disorders, pyrene disease and medication, substance abuse, stress, anxiety and depression, and also relationship issues. So understanding the potential cause uh, can help in diagnosing and treating ED effectively. If uh, you are experiencing ED, it's important to consult with the healthcare provider uh, to identify the underlying cause and also receive the appropriate treatment. When we talk about erectile dysfunction, uh, it comes about with a lot of complications and we have physical complications, we have psychological complications, we have social and also lifestyle complications, we have medical and also treatment complications, we also have long-term health complications which come up over the same. So we divide them, like physical, psychological, social and also medical so I'm going to start with the physical complications. Number one is about uh, where erectile dysfunction uh, complications. We have cardiovascular disease. ED can be an early warning sign for cardio cardiovascular problems. The same factor that cause ED such as testosterone, uh, such as astelacrosis, can cause the risk of heart attack and also stroke. Reduced quality of life as a physical complication. Persistent erectile dysfunction can lead to decreased uh, quality of life due to ongoing difficulties in achieving satisfactory uh, sexual activity. Psychological complications, we we'll talk about uh, stress and also anxiety. ED can cause significant stress and anxiety, which may further exacerbate the condition. Uh, the, the, the cycle of stress and ED can be challenging uh, to, to break. Depression comes about when we have this stress and anxiety as a psychological complication. So with depression, chronic KD contributes to development of depression because it can affect self-esteem and feelings of masculinity or desirability. Low self-esteem is also a psychological complication. ED can, uh, can bring about the feelings of inadequacy, uh, leading to decreased uh, lower uh, self-esteem, impacting the overall health and the well-being of the individual. Relationship problems also may crop up. Where, where now we have uh, ED straining the relationship, where leading to decreased intimacy, communication issues, increased con conflict between the partners, and also it may lead to reduction in sexual satisfaction for both uh, partners. So on social and also lifestyle complications, social, social isolation comes in, where men with ED avoid social interaction and the intimate relationship due to embarrassment, or fear of rejection leading to social isolation at that particular point. Reduced productivity is another thing which comes about with the, the burden of ED psychologically, increased uh, stress and also depression can affect the performance at work and also productivity of an individual. On medical and treatment related complications, we have complications for treatment where some treatment for ED such as medications uh, injections or uh, surgery can have side effects to relating to other complications. For example, oral medication can cause headache, flushing or visual disturbances, while surgical complica uh, implants can lead to infections or mechanical failures. On, and also on the medical and, uh, and uh, treatment re related complications, we may have underlying health issues and when we talk about this, we're talking about uh, ED can sometimes indicate the presence of other health uh, conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, also hormonal imbalance, which may require medical attention. And uh, in long-term health compli uh, complica implications, chronic health conditions, the presence of ED may be signal chronic conditions, uh, which can be managed long-term, such as diabetes and also cardiovascular disease. Number 12 is about fertility issues, where while ED does not directly cause infertility, 
uh, it can complicate it for us to conceive, especially if ejaculation is impaired. So erectile dysfunction can lead to a wide range of uh, complications which affect the health of an individual and the psychological well-being of an individual. Addressing ED early and also comprehensively uh, is crucial to mitigate the complications. If you experience the erectile dysfunction, seek help from the healthcare provider for treatment and the appropriate management so that you improve your sexual health and also overall uh, well-being. So on the management uh, of uh, the erectile dysfunction, we have uh, medications which we manage them. I talked about PDE5, what we call phosphor DRS5, which PDE5 inhibitors, such as uh, in Africa, most of the time we have Viagra or Sildenafil, Tadalafil, which we call Cialis in other places, uh, Fadafil or the Vitra, which is also used widely, and also Avanafil, where st or standard standra so these are the they enhance the effects of nitric oxide a natural chemical body produces it that relaxes muscles in the penis and also increase the blood flow to the penis and but it's about hormonal therapy the steroid replacement therapy or trg is also a form of uh, management of this so where trg you guys uh, when we talk about complications, we are talking about when zinc uh, uh, deficiency is left un unattended, we, where now you don't do the supplementation or you don't get into the sources of the archery or the animal sources, you get into severe de uh, immune dysfunction, where leading to frequent and severe infections, growth impairments, where we have standard growth in children. Developmental delays for cognitive and motor development issues crop up. Chronic diarrhea comes about leading to further nutrition deficiency and dehydration and also increased morbidity and mortality, particularly in vulnerable population like children and the elderly and especially in Africa the, with the patients with the HIV AIDS at that particular point. So on the prevention part of it, we talk about uh, balanced diet. Consuming a well-balanced diet that includes a variety of uh, zinc-rich foods. Uh, number two is about fortified foods. Choosing foods fortified with zinc, particularly for those restricted dietaries. Regular health checkups, monitoring zinc levels, especially at risk in uh, population. We're talking about the elderly, the kids, and also those with chronic illnesses, such as the HIV AIDS in Africa. So also public health interventions where we have implementation of public health measures to address the zinc deficiency in population, such as food fortification uh, programs, and also uh, regulating on how uh, diarrhea, especially in kids, is managed. Here in Africa, we have integrated management for childhood illnesses, especially for the, the diarrhea. We have zinc as a form of managing uh, this uh, diarrhea thing. So zinc is a vital mineral necessary for bodily functions, including immune response, growth and uh, development. And it's found in a variety of foods with animal sources being more bioavailable. Zinc deficiency can lead to significant health issues, but is manageable through dietary adjustment and also supplementation. So ensuring a zinc uh, adequate intake is essential for overall health and also well-being. So zinc is a very key component in our health, playing a critical role in uh, immune function, growth and the various metabolic processes, and awareness of zinc-rich dietary sources, recognizing signs of deficiency and implementing appropriate management and preventive measures can help maintain optimal zinc levels and prevent associated health um, complications at that particular point. This is by prioritizing zinc intake through the nutrition, balanced nutrition, and also public health initiatives that can promote better, better health outcomes for testosterone uh, for the individuals and also the community. Guys, that is zinc, uh, importance, complications, and how to manage them, and also the, the zinc relationship to testosterone and also the fertility. Guys, welcome to our next video. Then the channel is Nazvin. And kindly if you are not subscribed to us, kindly subscribe because that is the way you can always support us. By liking the video, you get to YouTube to recommend our video to the larger community. Guys, I want to appreciate you. We are watching our videos a lot nowadays. 
and we are really growing. Guys, take us to the next level. We are in a journey to 10,000 subscribers. And uh, guys, uh, we love you very much. Peace and I welcome you to the next one. Director Bano, I'm gone, man. <laughs>